Good morning, folks. We just bought the Bamboo Carbon X1 printer, and we threw up a quick clip of it on Instagram just showing off how fast it was, and uh, I've never been as inundated with messages uh, which said one of two things. Number one, probably about 30 people who've responded immediately to say that they also are completely in love with this machine, that they bought one. In fact, quite a few people said that they had bought multiple of them and are just, you know, rocking and rolling, which is great. Uh, and then the other response was, please do us a review and tell us how it is. So here's the quick caveat. I'm not a 3D printing expert. Go find other videos, Google this for folks that are, you know, dive into the super crazy weeds on all the crazy nitty gritty stuff behind 3D printers and the specs. Um, but I think the reason this video is valuable is I'm a little bit of an outsider. Um, Alex bought this printer, or we bought this printer. Alex installed it last week. I wasn't even here, I was on the road. I came in on Sunday. I just want to use it. I don't want to have to be an expert. And I'm, I'm, for me as a shop owner now, that's where I want this to go. We have interns come in, uh, new employees, et cetera. I want a printer that just works uh, and isn't one that requires that level of kind of knack. And there's a coolness factor behind it. And I, it's fun to nerd out, but I wanted a solution. Um, so what we love about it, first off, I will say the build quality is absolutely uh, spectacular. It looks really nice. <laughs> it's only on a fixture plate, by the way, because you know, this isn't the best table and it moves around so fast uh, that you want to have it on something stable. Uh, and not only is it fast, but what really attracted me to this printer was it seems to be a, a bit of a, a revolution, if that's a fair word, of doing stuff that now makes so much sense, but no one seems to have done before, at least that I'm aware of. So it does a tune-up process, the start of every print, and it's able to measure the motor response, the jerk vibration, and it can, uh, I think, I understand is this is why this printer can be so fast, is because it knows how to uh, compensate itself. Uh, and when I say it's fast, I I'm not kidding. Um, Lawrence has one of these, a couple other good friends have them. We're seeing prints that are approximately four times faster uh, than the other printers that we've had. Uh, by way of background, we've had a Prusa XL, a Prusa Mini, uh, an IDEX, uh, an independent dual head extruder here from Tenlog, with a cheap resin printer, and we used to have a Mark Forge. Mark Forge was a great printer, um, probably the closest to being a robust solution like the Bamboo. Uh, we don't have the Mark Forge anymore because I couldn't justify, I recall it was like $200 a roll for the um, expensive, fancy, strong filament, which just wasn't the right fit for us. Timestamps below to jump around in the video. I didn't really initially care about the speed because when somebody tells me it's four times faster, you just kind of think it wasn't, I, I, that wasn't the problem. What we did need another printer. Uh, there have been multiple times where uh, we've had to kind of allocate time within the shop as to who can use the printer and when. Um, and sometimes the printer's down, sometimes it's busy, but sometimes they just don't work great. Um, the IDEX printer is it's a little bit fussy. The, this has been solid. Our uh, Prusa XL, or excuse me, our Prusa regular Mark III, um, we just wore it out. The nozzle got jammed up, we replaced it, but after years of printing some failed prints, et cetera, it was, it was time to um, go to a new home. And I ordered the Prusa XL when it came out for pre-release about six months ago and had planned on buying it. Uh, now, it is slightly different than this machine. It has a bigger work envelope, and then that would have been nice, but that wasn't the primary driver. Um, I wanted it because Prusa seems to just deliver very robust 3D printers that just work. Um, it was enclosed and it had the multi-filament option, which is really nice. Whether you want to have different colors, whether you want to have redundancy failover here, or if you want to print, uh, I'm hoping we can do that on this printer, which is the uh, glue dissolvable supports. Uh, what is it? It's like PBA, the basically Elmer's glue that um, is a little bit of a pain to use, but if you need it, uh, it could be worth it. And by the way, I'll walk over here and show you um, the print. I mean, that's what blew me away. I literally came in Sunday. I've never used this printer before. Alex did a quick two minute screencast video for everybody in the shop so that we know how to set that printer up and use it, uh, which is really fun. That's how I like working. And the first print I had went absolutely great. Uh, the slicer is very similar to Prusa. It's, what is it, slicer, SLI, C3R or something, background, um, but very simple to use. And look at this. That is a single print multicolor that just looks Excellent. So when we heard all the buzz about the bamboo um, and saw that it's half the price of the Prusa XL and uh, it ships within a couple weeks. We ordered ours on March 3rd. I think it was here on the 20th uh, and it's set up and it's running. 
the touch screen is great. This is a print that I did uh, last night. And what I love about this too, is I did this print from home. Yes, old printers, you could set up Octopi or other web wireless printing. I never found that to be super reliable long-term, but it also requires a level of comfort and hackiness that um, you just don't have to deal with here. I just logged in from home on the slicer and sent the print to the printer. It's got a webcam built in so you can watch the live feed of it. Um, we'll talk in the next section about the downsides of that system in, in China, I guess. Um, but the touchscreen has been great to use, has an SD card in it to store uh, video time lapses. Um, again, it, it, it just kind of works. The quality is actually great as well. This is a, a prototype of our new zero point system and you can just see the build layers here are great. Uh, I'm not gonna get into crazy comments about the accuracy because I don't know yet, but um, like any FDM printer, it's not gonna be the same detail as like a resin printer. But um, what I will say, we'll go measure this here in a minute to put a caliper on it, but I did these two prints separately and you can see <laughs> nothing wrong with that. And now that I've been printing on the printer for four days, I will tell you, I love the speed. And it's not because I need high volume 3D printing throughout the week. It's because um, when I want to print something, having it in one hour instead of three or four hours, uh, it actually really helps. It helps you iterate more quickly, but it's also it kind of reminds me of the tour video we just did at Keselowski Advanced Manufacturing, where they think that they're using big boy metal 3D printers, um, but they think a lot about breaking down their print cycle into intervals that let them get one more run during the time that they're in the shop or their shift time. So for me, what's great is that, yeah, I don't, this print doesn't matter. If this print printed in four hours or three hours, no big deal. But the fact that I can print it so much quicker means I can get onto printing something else. If it doesn't work, I can print it again. And I don't need to think about making only one iteration or two iterations a day because it takes four hours and then I get distracted and then I print the second one, but then I'm gone before it goes. It's just so much more efficient to have a printer uh, that works well. And honestly, it's just, it, there's a coolness factor about uh, what they did to push the envelope and have uh, it work reliably, accurately, visi visibly pleasing, um, and just to print this as fast as it does. Side note, one of the other things I learned after ordering the printer is that the team that's backing this is from DJI. A couple of the folks have some pretty, uh, high, had some pretty high up positions at the drone company, which I think probably just speaks to the uh, ability for them to deliver a product and bring it to market successfully. In terms of what we built, here's kind of a screenshot of our exact order. Uh, and so we did go ahead and order some of the different plates. The one that we're using right now is the cool plate. Um, this is the AMS system. I found this confusing when I ordered it. Apparently you can have multiple AMS systems, but this is what we got. It has the four different filaments in it and it can, uh, again, automatically change between colors or filament types here. Uh, we have the note that says no TPU. Um, Alex put that on there. It's, it's not that this printer can't print TPU, um, but I think there's a quirk about how you have it in the AMS system or, um, or you might have to have TPU on the backside. We'll do another full-blown video review after we get to know it more. Um, the point of this video I wanted to be is more of a, for all the folks out there that are just wondering, what I love about print, this printer is I will, without hesitation, endorse it for folks like ours. You just want a printer that works and has some really nice new quality of life features and capabilities. Again, on the technology and sort of coolest side of things, it also has this camera system that can be used to detect failed prints. Again, I haven't had that happen yet because we haven't had any print fail, but that sort of a thing, uh, with the spaghetti detector, really nice. Okay, so stuff that we either don't like or want to make you guys aware of that we've seen so far. The first off is um, there's such good first layer bed adhesion that I had a really hard time getting uh, the, the part wasn't that bad because you can pull this out and uh, bend it. But the little remnants that it prints during the calibration warm up process, I found were really hard to get off with my fingernail. Um, I sort of confirmed with Alex that it's okay to use a scraper like this to gently scrape off. That made it super easy. But what scares me about that is again, I don't want there to be a bunch of tribal knowledge behind how we use this printer. I want anybody able to come up with the tools and just use it. So we'll get a plastic uh, squeegee or scraper here. That way, hopefully you don't end up gouging the print bed. Um, if you're totally new to 3D printing, the, the joke I remember hearing, the three great tips for getting 3D printers to run well are <laughs> bed level, bed level, bed level. Uh, this of course does auto bed leveling, but I think what they're saying there is you really want that good first layer adhesion. And this thing has uh, first layer uh, adhesion that I've never seen before. It's awesome. 
The software wasn't hard to install, but I, I kind of wish it gave us more of a direct path. When you install it, you still get the choice to install a bunch of different printers, a bunch of different nozzle options and so forth. And I just want anybody here to uh, joins on, has a new computer to say, just to install the Bamboo and just have it run as we've configured it. There might be a configuration file way that we could do that, but I don't want people to have to think, oh man, which printer am I choosing or which nozzle setting am I choosing? Um, and I want everyone to be able to share the um, current printer settings. So whatever color or filament styles that we have in there, kind of a cloud, I hate the cloud, but you know, kind of a cloud thing where uh, everybody's working on the same information set, which matches the reality. I'm not sure if that's possible yet, but it's, it's top of mind right now. For what it's worth, the support material I have found to be super difficult to remove. It's probably something that we can adjust in the settings, but the way it ships and the way those settings are set up, um, <laughs> the support material does its job, but I spent a lot of time last night trying to pull uh, some of that stuff away, so we will probably try to spend some time uh, adjusting that. It's also apparently quite wasteful when it switches uh, filaments. It does a bit of a purge uh, in the back there. Uh, if you watch some of the other videos, you'll see one of the first things everybody tells you to do is to print this, um, this trash shoe thing that kind of catches it here in the back, because otherwise it can just dump lots of filament out the back. Again, I know that that setting is adjustable. Why they don't ship it with a better setting, I don't know. And then finally, the, the sort of meatier stuff. Um, it is a printer from China. You're using their software and you're uploading every print through the slicer uh, remotely. So I've heard lots of chatter and concerns about intellectual property and the, who's getting access to your data. Uh, I don't know, I don't care. Um, so that's all I'm going to say on it. But if you're the type of person that cares about that, um, or I guess if you need to check about things like ITAR, uh, you should do your homework on that front. Um, but it is also a little bit of a closed loop system. Um, I have no problem with that personally, but apparently there's less you know, cross compatibility across the plethora of 3D printed parts and nozzles and, and hacks and so forth. Um, this is, may not play as nicely with that. Again, I just want a printer that works. I have no problem with it as it is. Um, but what is true that I've heard is you do want to use their filament. Uh, their filament is designed for their printer. It can auto detect it, which is really cool. Um, it's not that expensive, 25 bucks for a roll for, for PLA versus, you know, cheapest PLA we were buying was 20 bucks. So it's more, five bucks more a roll, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I have talked to folks that have used other filaments. It works, uh, excuse me, other brands of PLA. It works, but you actually do have to adjust their settings. And for me, uh, we're just going to use this stuff for now. It's it's not worth it at all for me to try to save five bucks um, just to have to deal with a bunch of settings and, and unknowns. Let us know in the comments below. Again, I know this wasn't a super in-depth video, uh, but we will start using it more. Alex, who's out today, is actually far more uh, up to no speed on some of the nerdy side of this. We'll do another video showing the review of it. We have a good article. I will put a li the link description on the 30 different ways we're using a 3D printer in our machine shop. So many of quality of life improvements. Uh, the part that I'm printing Right here, this is a little insert for our Okuma just to prevent chips building up between the, the B axis and the tool probe because I don't want to have to stick a tool in there or a wash down gun in there all the time to, to um, get those chips out of there. And I don't want them building up, trapping moisture, uh, causing other problems long term. Again, let us know in the comments below what else you want to see uh, on this printer from a review or a capability standpoint. Otherwise, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.